Hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here um, to be able to introduce this panel, for which I have a very special connection to some of the panelists. But first of all, I want to thank President Healy. We started this journey four years ago in Cartagena, then Dubai, then Thailand. And every year, this event continues to create a higher impact in the Babson community in order to become its signature event and maximize the Babson network. In addition to that, I want to, start to share some of the connections I have with this panel. Since I was a freshman in FME class, they have been our role models. All of the professors of FME classes, my friends, we only heard their names. They were the top entrepreneurs, the recent entrepreneurs, the ones that knew how to use the Babson network, the Babson spirit, in order to create global enterprises. And that was four years ago. I want to start first by giving each of them a minute to introduce themselves. So first, we want to start with John Gosha on the left. Give him a, a, a short one minute to tell a story about himself. Sure, well, thank you, Martin. Well, uh, I've known Martin actually since his freshman year as well, so it's been uh, a pleasure to work with you also. But um, I was very fortunate at Babson that uh, I was able to start my first company uh, you know, in, in my dorm room. So I'm the founder of Idea Paint. Uh, if you all use dry erase boards, thank you. <laughs> but uh, for those of you who don't know what Idea Paint is, uh, you probably use dry erase boards or whiteboards at your offices every day. So I invented a, a paint that you paint on your wall and it turns your wall into a, uh, a giant you know, dry erase writing surface. So I've been fortunate that uh, that company has become a success, and now I'm on to uh, my second company, uh, where I'm selling light bulbs. But uh, they, uh, we have a new technology called Tesla technology, and our light bulbs are energy efficient and long life, similar to LED, but that they, have, they have that nice, warm, beautiful, natural glow of the bulbs we all grew up with. So uh, today we um, are now available in Costco, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, about 3,000 retailers uh, nationwide. And uh, just about four weeks ago, we closed our Series D, which was a $50 million round of financing. And I look in the crowd, I see a number of my investors here. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, John. Oh. <laughs> now we have Alexander Thompson founder of TGI International. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, I'm Alexander Thompson, founder of TGI. After graduating from Babson, I moved to Angola uh, after a short stunt in the corporate world in the US and started TGI, which started off as a mobile phone and telecommunications distribution company. Uh, today, it's grown into a holding and investment company, which we have oil and gas business, still telecommunications, hotels, uh, fintech, and uh, electronic, but online uh, investments. We're a 700-person team worldwide. And really just amazing to see, you know, sitting up here having, you know, using this Babson connection and Babson network where I literally have people that have invested in us, people that have worked with us, like Melissa, she came down to Angola and worked with us and set up our office in London, and being able to be one of the lucky ones invested in John. So thank you guys, and thank you for all being here and having us. Thank you. Now we have Charles Lorenzo, Managing Director at Ace and Company in London. Thank you. So uh, yes, I'm with Ace and Company. You have another representative of Ace here on the on the panel. So Ace is uh, is probably the epitome of what uh, Babson can stand for because it was started by uh, three Babson Babsonites, and I wasn't part of that. I joined uh, shortly after, and uh, and uh, you know as as Alex mentioned, we've. Uh, so we're an investment firm. We focus on, on, on private equity. We invest in private firms, and we do that for private investors. Um, and throughout this journey, we had the chance of um, investing, working, partnering with, uh, well, everyone on this panel uh, and, uh, and other people in the room. Uh, and Babson has been this uh, amazing network that has uh, kept growing for us. And today, we have uh, five offices on the four continents. And out of the five, four out of those five offices are, are led or, or have um, a, a Babsonite at the, at the helm of it. So, um, so Babson can be truly global.
Thank you, Charles. Now we have Melissa Arostegui, co-founder and manager of One Dominican. Uh, hi, I'm Melissa. I'm from the Dominican Republic. I've worked after BAPS and I worked in the US, uh, Dominican Republic, Angola, London, now recently Amsterdam. And uh, um, so when I moved to Dominican Republic, I worked for an asset management firm, which actually we managed a fund called Putney, where the two managing investors met, uh, <coughs> where the fund that I worked for. So Babson has always been around for me. And then I worked for Alex in Angola and uh, moved to London, where I've been working freelance since, doing what I call, very short, like sustainability everything. I've been working with high impact entrepreneurs and investors. Uh, want to change uh, how business is being done. And I've also co-founded a company that manages distressed assets in the wind energy business. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, we have Adam Said, CEO at Ace and Company. So one thing we didn't say so far is everyone on this panel was in the same year. Yes. We're all class of 2006. So we, yeah, <laughs> went to, and I know there's a few more in the room. So the, um, I, I was class of 2006, but I graduated a year early. So I worked. Go the, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it will explain a bit the experience. I was joined. I, I worked uh, in finance for a year and then decided to start ACE. And the best thing I could think of was to call my Babson classmate that were graduating a year later, run the idea by them. And two of them said, great idea. We're moving to Switzerland. So they came. We started ACE initially like a research firm. And we started to cover niche markets, things that were poorly covered, like Malaysian palm oil stocks in 2006 were poorly covered, or Saudi Arabian stock market, no one covered that. So we did research and then grew eventually into execution, diligence, asset management. Today we have a $850 million portfolio across 150 portfolio companies globally. And I'm very, very proud that we have probably a dozen Babson alums in running companies. We have half a dozen in our team. And the Babson Network keeps on expanding. So uh, I'm delighted to have my classmates here and all the professors in the room. And it's great to be here. <laughs> Lastly, our moderator, one of the greatest professors we've had in Babson, Professor Emeritus since 2013, Jean-Pierre Jeannette. Thank you, and I hope we yeah. enjoyed the panel. Hello everyone, I didn't find, uh, didn't found a company, but I made a very important entrepreneurial decision in 1974, and that was join Babson. <laughs> and I think it was a great investment. So talking to our panelists and sort of figuring out how we could share the story, uh, I would just like to remind everyone that about 15 years ago, five young people arrived at Babson from five different destinations, from Denver, from Miami, from Geneva, from Dominican Republic, Geneva again. Just because two from Geneva doesn't mean they knew each other. So none of them knew each other. 15 years later, one of them works in Boston, one of them works in Geneva, one of them works in Angola, one of them works in Amsterdam, one of them works in London. But they created a network and uh, in a very interesting way. And I think that what we need to do here is to understand better how they did it so that we can all learn and benefit from that. And the way uh, I, I, I thought we would start is we turn to Melissa, who will give us a little background as to how and where and, and in what way on campus they got to know each other. And so then we cycle through some of the other stories. So Melissa. Get us started. Uh, well, in my first year in Babson, I got to work with Adam in a project and another, uh, Pepe Freire, which is in here. And I also got to work with Charles in, uh, in my final project, actually. And Alex and I were in our FME business together uh, to think that we fought over so much stuff and ended up working together years after. Uh, we were in the marketing team together. But robes. Yeah, bathrobes. Um, so, uh, <laughs> very innovative, but yeah. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> um, so I wanted to do a little story about how I got here and kind of discovered what these guys have been up to for the past 10 years. Uh, I, I moved back to Dominican Republic after working for a while in, in Boston, and 
I started working in, uh, after the crash in 2008, I got hired by a, an asset management firm to kind of like, they were very concerned about how business was being run and they were like, there's this thing called CSR, sustainability, like you need to read about it and everything. And after five years of working with them, uh, kind of like in a bubble in Dominican Republic and around that area, I was like, like just what's going on in the world, this whole thing. And anyways, fast forward to 2014, I actually went to Honduras and got to reconnect to a Babson student, then was in a friend of ours wedding in Cartagena, who's here in the public. And I started to like talk about all of this with Alex and another group. I'm like, all of this is happening. What should we do? Maybe we should start a fund and invest in, in, in what high impact entrepreneurs are doing this and that. Um, Nothing. I said that. A week later, I got a call from Alex, and he's like, what you said kind of resonated with me. Uh, when did you come over and see what we're, what we're doing over here? And I'm like, cell phones, Angola? I'm not even sure where in the map that is. He's like, just come over. And I was just having the worst day of work, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going. So I get on a plane, go to Angola, um, start working with Alex, and it just like blew my mind. All of these things that I had studied in the MBA, read about, and even knowing him, not knowing that like some that that all of this was going on in Africa and like the contrast, the business, the margins. Anyways, through that, go to London and find Ace, where I, I was lucky enough to work from their offices for a while while I was going back and forth from Angola and see how they were doing all of this that I was talking about already. Uh, they, they had the fund, which invested in each other, not only invested, mentoring each other, like I need help here, this, that, office space, open this, and like the, the, the I guess, true meaning of all of the, the, everything that we learned in Babson, they had kind of like naturally created it in, in London. And then I went to the ACE conference and saw John presenting uh, and got an update about what he was doing. and. Ever since then, decided to go freelance, and uh, all three of them here have been a lot of support. And w one thing that we were talking about uh, upstairs is it's not so much as investors, it's uh, the support that we give each other. It's like kind of like a fraternity. Uh, I never went to a, to a boarding school, but I, the people think, say it's similar, but the, that brotherhood and just knowing that everybody, like, they have your back and they'll open doors, I feel like as long as, as, as you're willing to, to do the work that is outside of that door, like everybody's just willing to, to, to help you get there, and, and it's, it's amazing. Thank you. I think the, one of the first um, connections was with John, and I think uh, some of the activities that all spun off, John, you had a lot to do with that because you were a bit ahead of the others, I understand. Well, so uh, tell us how you started your business and then how the, re the rest of them got involved. <coughs> sure, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm uh, at all responsible for uh, the four achievements that we have here, but uh, maybe I was, uh, I dove in first, um, you know, at Babson, you know, founding Idea Paint, uh, you know, in my dorm room. You know, I guess I, uh, I, I want to start out by just saying, you know, a big thank you uh, to Babson. You know, I, my, my success is attributed to Babson. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here today not only because of the support of, of these four, but uh, the support of the, uh, of the Babson community. So I'll just share maybe uh, two quick stories to, uh, you know, to answer your question. But um, you know, the first one was you know, I had this idea for this you know, paint, and I was, you know, we were up in E-Tower, which is a dorm for entrepreneurs, hanging pieces of paper on the wall. And we we're you know, writing our ideas on them and having to tear it down and put new pieces of paper up. And uh, you know, gosh, you know, there's got to be a paint out there. We can just paint the walls and ride on the walls. So anyway, I wrote up my idea. I uh, went and visited one of my professors, Professor Elizabeth Riley. And uh, I went to her house in, in Wellesley, and I walked in with two pieces of paper, and one had my idea all you know, sketched out, and then the other piece of paper had the numbers of what I was going to spend the money on. And I was telling her about my idea, and uh, she gets out her checkbook. And she writes a check, and she hands it to me. And I look at the check, and she had written me a check for $75,000. Wow. And she was uh, one of my very first investors uh, at Idea Paint. I go, you know, Elizabeth, don't we have some paperwork to do? <laughs> oh, well, Professor Riley, I told her about it. She's like, don't, you know, don't worry about that right now. Send it to me. Uh, so that was uh, you know, kind of my beginning of uh, having an investor at um, you know, while I was a student at Babson. But uh, you know, since then, I have uh, had a, you know, tremendous support from a, uh, from a Babson family here. 
And uh, I remember when I first met that family, it was uh, at the president's uh, dinner, which is a dinner of Babson hosts. And I was fortunate to be the, uh, the student that was lucky enough to, to speak at the dinner. And afterward, I, I, I met the, this couple. And uh, I think I started out by saying, I'd love to meet your daughter. Because <laughs> uh, they had a daughter that was uh, in our classes as well. But um, you know, this family, after I graduated Babson, I uh, decided not to take a job um, on Wall Street at Goldman Sachs and uh, to pursue this little paint idea. And so I had no money, and uh, you know, just I wanted everything to you know go towards developments and, and know where to live. So I you know didn't want to pay for an apartment, and really couldn't afford an apartment. So uh, you know, the family let me live uh, at their house uh, for six months. <laughs> I uh, tested the paint in their garage. They still have the paint on the floor to prove it. And uh, many mornings I'd go to work and I'd reach into my pocket and I'd find you know maybe ten or twenty dollars um, for lunch money. Uh, so that family is, uh, you know, Greg and Elsie Burl, who have, uh, you know, really given me my, uh, my start here. So, you know, big thank you. But, uh, so, you know, maybe I, I, I dove in a little early, but it's been the network of, of Babson, and then now with, uh, you know, these, these guys who have all been, uh, you know, my investors in, in the latest company um, that, you know, has allowed me to, to come from, you know, uh, you know, a uh, you know, middle class family in Colorado to uh, be sitting here today, so. Well, let's see how some of uh, the rest of them got involved. Maybe uh, we'll talk with Charles and also. Uh, no, sure, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, I think uh, this, these relationships uh, uh, were really genuine and organic to start with. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, we decided to wake, uh, wake up after graduation, uh, gone through a, an alumni directory and said, okay, I need to, I need to start you know, recontacting this person. I think we, uh, you know, we have, um, uh, to echo a little bit the, the keynote before lunch, but really have tried to connect uh, at a much deeper level uh, or had the opportunity to connect at a much deeper level throughout the, the, the four years. And um, you know, funnily, you mentioned we both from Geneva, but I had never met uh, Adam uh, prior to the first day of Babson, and he ended up being the first person I, I met on campus. And look where we are, 15 years later, uh, uh, partners uh, in our business. And Alex was also probably uh, met during the first day at Babson, and gave me a huge smile, and uh, and, uh, and I think we became friends uh, ever ever since. Uh, so um, yeah, for me, it's this ability to uh, to to really uh, interact as a family. I think we, we mentioned that word, and uh, that was really the feeling I had for, for undergrad, and, um, and that's a unique setup. I've never, I've never found this. Even in my, my MBA, you know, you, you, you don't get this, uh, this type of uh, intense relationship. So. Yeah. Adam, uh, you want to respond on the no, way you set so, up yeah, this? I think the, the fact that the relationships are genuine are very important. I think the, the program at Babson is really incredible. Uh, I, you know, we'll talk about this maybe in more depth after, but uh, what happens through your, uh, the years you're at Babson, you basically have this natural self-selection. You're starting to take classes. You're joining the business that you have more interest in. And so you create these deeper bonds and just you know, sit in a classroom and listen to a professor talk. You're forced to work together. And I think we really had to all interact through school, get to know each other. And I, mean, I was saying, we were sitting at lunch with some current students, and you know, I really insisted, these have to be genuine relationships. Don't think that you can just call up a Babson alum and, hey, what, you know, help me because of your Babson alum. You really have to you know, uh, invest yourself in it. You know? A lot of people think of a network as something that you can tap into, and when I need it, I'll call up and I'll you know, take a coin out of that saving jar I have somewhere. It's not, that's not how it works. It's the opposite. You know, a network is something you, you keep putting coins in. Right? and you keep paying it forward, and people need your help, and you answer the call, and you go visit them in their home country. You show up at the wedding. Uh, their kid comes. We have you know, uh, some Babson alum, the children, doing internships at, at, at Babson, uh, at ACE. Uh, I've done a number of recommendations for people that I generally believe should go to Babson. Uh, I, you do that, and then it comes back to you. Then it comes and, back. And you know, I didn't think when, I, the first time I met John, it was at the E-Tower presentation. Uh, we were both applying to go to the E-Tower. I didn't get in, he did. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, but he walked in with you know, a piece of plywood. He's like, that's what I invented. I was like, oh, OK. Uh, and then you know, we stayed in touch. We were in classes together after we kept crossing each other in similar classes. Like, hey, you know. We clearly have some interests in common. Uh, same for everyone here. Uh, Melissa, same class. Charles, 
we, we knew, I knew there was another person from Geneva coming. Someone had told me. So I kept listening for people speaking French. And <laughs> Charles showed up, and he was like, oh, where are you from? I was like, from Geneva. He's like, oh, me too. I was like, yeah, and your name is Charles. I was like, how do you know that? And I was like, so we, we, we built that connection. And we didn't join till it was the right time. So there's, it's not about you know, making it unnatural. Oh, it's Babson. Mm -hmm. I have to dedicate to that. The people that we ended up investing in, I just learned today that one of them was a Babson alum because he's here. I didn't even know. Uh, and it's, you share these common traits, and it comes naturally. If there's one thing that was said earlier, definitely the efforts of keeping the Babson network global under President Healy is really, really, really great. Uh, we've seen a real difference. I'm sitting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting in yeah. small Geneva. We have 250,000, you know, people in this, this small city. And you know, President Haley did come by. Met was I got to meet her. And you know, it, this global network in every c country that I go to, every city, there's always this little Babson connection, and we need to maintain that. And like I said, put the coins in and keep doing that, and one day it pays off. And look, how many so, how many people from our class? Uh, at yeah, yeah. Imagine yesterday I had a birthday dinner with 50 friends or spouses. Yes. Yeah. Amazing from our class. Amazing. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, Alexander, tell us how you got connected. I mean, you knew each other, but then there was more to it after. Yeah. Well, man, everything is Babson. It's crazy. It's, it's, I literally, we lived together. I, I started in Gola. When I started there, my first investor I met from Adam, he gave me 180,000 bucks, and I started out, he's the reason I went to Angola, was a guy named Chris Chagru that Adam introduced me to. Uh, Charles was an investor in the TGI fund and invested with us. Uh, Melissa, as you heard, came out and worked with us. Uh, I was lucky enough to have John accept my money, and uh, <laughs> African money, and <laughs> it's all kosher. Uh, and uh, so really, we're all so connected. And it's interesting because we always think about, and we talk in our class, like, man, is everybody else like us? Like, is there so many, is there such a strong connection like us? And it was funny, we were talking about this, and I don't know if I'm jumping into the wrong section, but, you know, this event is something great because it's allowing us to meet parents and people that were before us and after us and new ones. So this is these kind of events kind of allows us to leverage that Babson network, not just on this 2006 level, but the new guys. Man, I've met a couple guys today. I told somebody, hey, why don't you come out for an internship? A, uh, a Brazilian uh, student that's there now. You know, I've met a couple guys that, you know, franchise boss of Latin America right there, Juan Carlos, that you'll see we're going to open franchises in Angola and Africa. <laughs> you know, and, and mark my words. Mark my words. <laughs> and, you know, really, it's just so amazing to have this kind of network. And I think that, you know, we've all gone to different conferences and business conferences and networking things. And you guys have to feel what I'm feeling of this unique connection that we're all here. We all kind of respect. We all respect each other because we all went to Babson. There is this kind of guard down. It's kind of a fun thing, but you know everybody's a badass. You know, it's really like it's an amazing thing. Look at the people that you're meeting. Look at, man, this building that we're in. It's, you know, everything. It's all Babson people, and we are great, and we're going to do great things and get ready and use this. <laughs> it's amazing. <But> the, um, <laughs> is there something in your experience in the classes, and I worked in projects, as we've heard, uh, that sort of makes you tick alike so then you later on can more easily involve yourself in business? Is, is there something specific that you could say, well, we look at this problem the same way. Is Actually, there something like that? Yeah. Well, I think, if I may. Yeah, uh, Charles. No, but just the, the fact that we've been, sorry, maybe it's too strong of a, of a term, but almost brainwashed with the, with the virtues of entrepreneurship for four years. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, well, we, we all think differently, but we all have this knack for um, taking action. I think, and, uh, and if we want to do something, uh, to just do it. Uh, and uh, I think that Babson has given us that freedom of, uh, of not restricting ourselves uh, for, for, for anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, that probably what made this all possible, because uh, we were a bit uh, 
Uh, <laughs> that's clueless. Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, going on that, you know, what is entrepreneurship? It's so funny. You have people all the time, you think, man, I want to go start a business, oh, but I don't have money, you know, or I don't have this. How am I going to start a, you know, I need this. You know, when he started Idea Pain, he didn't have any money. And what being an entrepreneur is, is not caring about the no. There's always gonna be a barrier in front. Of course. You know, there's always gonna be, and what an entrepreneur is is saying, I'm gonna find the yes. You know, I realize you put all these barriers in front of you. You put the guy that says you can't do this. You put the idea, every no that you have in your head is in your head. I didn't have any money when I started. Nobody did. You know, you have to go out and you have to find it. And it's just saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I don't care. I'm going to do this. And it's persistence. And that's what's being an entrepreneur, keeping on going until you figure out how to solve it. And there's always a way. You want to know the secret to success, guarantee success? Don't give up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the interesting thing is, is how you keep your network going now because we go from then uh, from Boston to Angola to London to Amsterdam to Geneva you are physically separated but we certainly have a feeling we just took you out of the same hotel room so to speak so how do you keep in touch now and keep the network alive uh, Facebook you know? start there they are. <laughs> Melissa yeah I, I would say, I mean, uh, and I, I learned this to take it to another level, because again, I was, for like a big chunk of my career in Dominican Republic, you just bump into people, but I went to work with Alex, and we would even go to meetings with people, and I'm like, where did you meet this guy? Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, like it just the, the power of social media, I think uh, we use it to, to our benefit, uh, definitely, and, uh, and I, like, you, you end up hanging out in the same areas if you also have the same interests. Like we bump into each other in conferences. I mean, ACE does a great conference uh, uh, that, that I got to go to with Alex a couple of years ago. Um, and, and, and other events or cities where, where stuff is happening. If you're in the, also in the entrepreneurial, I guess, arena in, we're all technically in Europe. Uh, John Except. comes over a lot, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so we ch see each other a lot, but there's, there's also the, the social side where we go to each other's weddings, we say happy birthday to each other, we send each other sometimes random messages like, hi, can I call you? Uh, there, is a, there is a friendship behind this yeah. as well, where we genuinely check up on each other, which, which is something, yeah. And we use it, each other as, a, as a agents as well, because, uh, you know, I was so happy to... There's been people from my class that I haven't seen in the last 15 years, to be honest, but uh, I'm meeting them yesterday was like I had left them uh, uh, also the day before. And I think that's because everybody keeps part of the network uh, uh, active. And so we can rely on, on each other mm -hmm. to, um, to um, shortcut, if you want, uh, all the, the, the maintenance yeah. that you would have to do otherwise. You could just jump right in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, when I talk to you, uh, there's a couple of ways you described your relationships. So you were friends, you were also mentors and partners, and you had me strike the word investor, said no, it's partners. <laughs> but one thing that we have not talked about is the mentor part. Now there's a number of personal stories here, and to the extent that we may want to address that, who wants to start on this one? Well, I think on the investor side, one thing I'll, I'll bounce back on is a comment of what an, an entrepreneur is. So when I went to Babson in 2002, I remember telling my dad, I'm going to do a degree in entrepreneurship. He told me, entrepreneur what? And he was an entrepreneur himself, but entrepreneurship wasn't the buzzword that it is 15 years later. It was something that was, you know, kind of a derivative of management. It was the idea that, you know, I, I rem remember looking up in French what entrepreneur means, and it means entreprendre, which if you translate it back to English means undertaking, so the idea of you know taking something and yeah. you know driving it forward, and I was very excited by, by that idea. But over the last 15 years, one thing I've noticed is it's also changed. People think of an entrepreneur as someone who, who raises money at uh, you know 500 million dollar valuation and is able to do a sales pitch and speak at a tech crunch conference and you know be a keynote. And then that's not what I was taught an entrepreneur is. What I was taught an entrepreneur is, is the you know person who wakes up in the morning painting in his garage, you know has ten dollars in his pocket, and the guy who goes to Angola and you know 
doesn't have a dollar in his pocket and is willing to pick up the phone and meet someone. So I think that we've all stayed true to that genuine entrepreneurship. Yeah. And we shouldn't, and I think Babson has a duty to maintain that and own that flag because it's being kind of hijacked into what, you know, the Silicon Valley VC world, which is great, it has great purpose, but it's not genuine entrepreneurship as I was taught. So I think we all share that common thread mm -hmm. of what we define as, you know, being doers and taking on uh, challenges. Um, that's the, the common bond. I didn't like the word investor before. Of course, we're investors, but the biggest resource we all have is our time, right? So it's easy for me to tell, you know, uh, Alex, oh, call this person. He's in Angola. Maybe he'll help you. And then he gave him the capital. But it didn't start there. It started it was understanding what Alex wanted to do, who would be a relevant connection. Yeah. I wasn't calling someone random and trying to sell them on Alex. I just connected them and generally they mm -hmm. share the common interest and got together and got this going. Um, so in, in, in a way, I think it goes back to kind of the, our education and, and, and what the, the school taught us. And ultimately being an investor should be a derivative of sharing values, of sharing interests, of sharing mm -hmm. you know, a vision. Um, you know, we all, we, like we say, we always say we're all uh, in, 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 in John's project, you know, John has seen challenges and great successes, and it's not easy every day. But I know that you know we're all backing him, not because of the financial return, but because we generally believe there's a need for this and there's a market, and that if someone can achieve this, it would be a person with his character. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes back yeah. to that. We don't just want to be investors or uh, pass capital around. Too many schools yeah. do that. We're here about passing our time and our knowledge around. Now, John, you're on the other side of the Atlantic in a way. I mean, they're not all living in the same place, but, but do you feel like you're part, part of them or Atlantic doesn't matter to you? Yeah, I, was, I mean, the Atlantic is there, but I spend most of my time on airplanes anyway. Uh, not more than this guy, but um, <laughs> if you'll notice, I'm, you know, one of the only, I'm the only American, you know, up here, and I think that the connection between the international students and the international community has been something I've really have benefited from. Um, you know, we live in a, in a global world, and I think that if I, if I didn't have exposure um, you know, to, to people like this and to, you know, some of the network that we have here, you know, I, I don't think that I'd be able to achieve the things I've been able to achieve today. So, um, yeah, the, the distance is, is difficult, but I think that it's, it's events like this that have, uh, you know, brought me closer uh, to these guys. And ACE has a, a tremendous event every year. Um, they may be able to attend to, uh, to spend some time with them as well, and others come. So, uh, you know, I'd say it's something, you know, you have to, like, you have to put effort into. Uh, but uh, it's the events that, you know, for me at least, uh, it gives me a venue to, uh, to spend time. Uh, Charles, you, want, you wanted to make a point? No, I agree with John. It's like everything in life. Uh, you, you, you get out what you put in, and, um, and uh, I think uh, where Babson is great is that it, you have this global platform. You have all these opportunities. We talked about mentorship. I know I found great strength in uh, my peers uh, and be able to uh, draw from either their experience, their guidance, and, um, and having the ability to you know, uh, uh, support projects that are happening uh, all over the world um, makes me proud to, to be part of this network, yeah. always. Let, let, let's reflect out here. We have, as you already noticed, some uh, of your peers who are yet to graduate. And there's, of course, an older crowd here. Uh, let, let's first address your younger future colleagues, alumni. Uh, any word of uh, wisdom you have as they are still there, right? I think that... Yes, Alexander. I got some. <coughs> the greatest <laughs> asset that you have is your time. And anything you put time and energy into grows. So if you put your time and energy into your fears, they will grow. If you put them into your dreams, they will grow. If you put them into your network, it will grow. So be very, very, you know, we all worry about this investment, that, and how to do it. How many times have we sat in a class or sat at a job and been like this or sexting on the phone or doing whatever, you know? What you got to do, invest your time wisely. You know, every single time you're sitting down anywhere, if you're sitting down with a person, if you're sitting down speaking to people, invest your time 
as if it is more valuable than money because it is. And when you do that, you're going to start seeing that wherever you put it will grow. And think about your dreams and you will see they will happen. Wonderful. And what, what do we have to say to the, uh, shall we say, older crowd? <laughs> so that they may still do, yes? Maybe I'll take that one, but uh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the, the young crowd. But uh, no, I okay. reach out to uh, you know, a Babson student. You know, I, I, I said this already, but uh, I think that you know, being able to have, you know, I wouldn't be at this event today if I wasn't you know, in invited. Um, you know, I wouldn't be you know, able, you know, I, if I didn't have the network um, you know, really reaching out to me. So um, you know, I appreciate it, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, you know, a lot of the students at Babson appreciate it. Um, I've had an opportunity to uh, you know, spend some time at Babson and with people like Martine, uh, who are incredible students. So um, you know, I, I think that's going to you know, help us grow is just you know, reach out. Yeah. I have something to add to that. Yeah. To the, Melissa. Yeah, something to add to the, to the older and the younger. I mean, I just have to do this plug because I'm the only woman on this panel. But uh, I was lucky enough to, to uh, never have a, a glass ceiling, especially if, if you have some sort of an intuition going to like what Alex was saying, that you're, you, you're, you're bigger, there's something that you're chasing. There's a moment that you have to like shut the noise out of what people are telling you. You can either fall into that and, and do what everybody else is expecting from you or do your own thing. And uh, um, that's, it's constant. You have to put in that effort and just go through those hurdles. I was, for the older crowd, I would say, if you have this, your sons and daughters and whatever they, they come up with, just, just support them. And I always had that uh, from my dad. Uh, just like, sky's the limit, sky's the limit. Uh, I probably live too far for him from, from what he would like, because the sky, like, I keep going. <laughs> but, and, and the same for, for the younger ones. Uh, Sometimes you have to ignore what even your parents are telling you. Like, if you really just, just follow that. And again, I was lucky to have that in, in, in my house. Then with my friends in Babson, and one of the things when I came to Babson, my first shock in Babson was how everybody just, they, they really wanted to win this FME challenge. And then the next one, and get better grades. And, and I was like, what is this? They don't, they don't stop at anything. We're not, it's not, you don't win money off of this. You don't, you, like, what, what are we going after? Like, they're, they're just so hungry and it's uh, addictive. Then I later was lucky enough to have a boss to the same that I was like, what about this? And then she's like, forget about it. We're, 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 gonna, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. So just follow, really, really follow that, that, that fire inside of you. Just uh, forget about uh, what everybody else is saying. It's everything is possible, okay. really. A lot of the older crowd here are parents. And naturally, as parents, you fear for your children, you fear for their future, you worry about them. And I think for parents and for the next future, realize anything you think about happens. So instead of thinking about the fears, think about the great things your kids are going to do. You kids, think about, don't think about your fears. They're all real. Everything is real. Everything's in your mind. So just think about the greatness. Think about the good things that are going to happen. And they will happen, I promise you. And your kids are all going to be great. They're Babson students, baby. They're going to be stars. <laughs> well, I'd uh, like to take the opportunity here to just uh, uh, say a few words about, uh, about this experience also with the panel. I, I thought that having and hearing from them should certainly uh, put any kind of uh, doubts to rest that maybe some of your older uh, people here in the room and trustees have. I think if you ever wondered what your investment can achieve, here it is. <laughs> and I think that's the message I'd like you to take away from this. And uh, it's very clear that this group will also take not only themselves, but perhaps to a higher level. And you know, some years down the pike, you'll be sitting there, and some other group will be sitting up here, and we'll be still hearing Hopefully. wonderful stories. So, my association with Babson has always been that the students that drove us faculty to achieve always better. So not only were they competitive, they made us want to achieve always better. And I don't think I could have stood it. 40 years without having students 
like them in my classroom. So this is my experience. And professors like you. <laughs> and professors like you.